Thank you so much for joining us today. So before we get started, um, I just wanted to go over a couple of housekeeping items. Um, today's business fight session is being recorded and we will have a panel discussion for about 30 minutes and 10 minutes of a Q&A session at the end. Please use the chat to ask any questions and Brian from my team will guide uh, your questions at the end. Um, after this webinar, you will receive a thank you email that will include a link to read the recording, a short survey and uh, some information about the next business fights um, in September. So um, yeah, my name is Julia Schlier and I'm with Hannah House Newport Beach, a flexible co-working space and cafe, which is currently closed, but we are very excited that we partner together with Onnit Access, an innovation consulting firm to host business fights every second Wednesday of each month, where we have thought leaders, um, where they share insights and experience on leadership, innovation and technology. So uh, make sure you check out our event schedule at hanahouse.com slash events and follow us on social media for any updates. And our wonderful Kelly O'Connell from Honest Access is our moderator today. And without any further you know, ado, Kelly, I will pass it over to you to kick off um, the, the talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia. And thank you to all of you who are live on today's session. Uh, we do have a global audience and we know many of you are still joining in. Uh, so we do appreciate you being here over your lunch hour. The Virtual Business Fight series is really a fireside chat. And today we're very privileged to have great industry thought leaders joining us to talk about the very interesting conversation of the role of technology in innovation. And so as we think about this concept of technology and innovation, uh, I'll ask all of you in attendance just to take a moment and pause for yourself and, and think for yourself, what is the role of technology? Uh, does technology drive innovation or does technology enable innovation that's conceptualized by people? Historically, how our organizations respond to change and innovate help to determine organizations' success, their competitive advantage in the marketplace. And according to Harvard Business School, companies that are focused on innovation and prioritize innovation and change agility grow faster than their competitors. But today, we're gonna be talking with industry practitioners about their personal experience with the role that technology plays in innovation. The format of today's session will be a moderated conversation. We'll be talking with a panelist for approximately 30 minutes, asking them about their experience and asking them to share a personal experience with all of you. And then we'll leave it up to you for approximately 10 to 15 minutes to ask questions of interest to you. But if at any time during today's conversation, you have a point of interest or there's something that one of the speakers shares that's of particular interest to you, do feel free to utilize the chat feature. Uh, our moderator uh, host, Brian, will be answering questions within chat and strategically will add those questions into the open Q&A. Thanks, and with no further ado, we'll welcome the panel. So on today's panel, uh, as all of you know, uh, we have really esteemed guests participating with us. Uh, I'm gonna ask each of them to briefly introduce themselves and to tell us a bit about their role within their respective organizations. I'll start today uh, by asking Raman to do a quick introduction. Raman? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. I'm glad to be here. Um, Raman Dillon, I work for Procore. You can see it in the background. Uh, so Procore is a construction software management uh, platform. We are the leaders in space. In this space, you can think of us as a Salesforce of construction. Um, I work in the platform organization, which is about bringing third-party developers and partners to come and innovate on our platform. So you can look at it as an innovation platform. Um, and there's incredible amount of innovation going on in construction. I'm actually new to this industry. Um, so I joined about a year back and uh, my mind boggles uh, me, the amount of new things that are happening. And I'll share some of that um, 
but it's all about getting partners to come in and fill the gaps that we don't fill today. And so that's going pretty well. Thank you very much, Raman. Grateful to have you here today. And I'll move the conversation mic over to Richard to introduce himself. Yeah, hi, my name is Richard Lombardi. I'm the uh, Senior Vice President of uh, Data Strategy and Innovation at uh, Black Knight. Um, if anybody's familiar with Black Knight, basically a, a, a company that specializes in software and solutions and data for the uh, uh, for many, many many markets, but primarily the mortgage lending and um, uh, lending sectors. Um, uh, Black Knight uh, is headquartered in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I'm part of what's called the Data and Analytics Division, which is headquartered here in Irvine, California. Um, we, uh, uh, Black Knight itself specializes in uh, three key areas, uh, origination of loans, servicing of, of mortgage loans, and then the data and analytics uh, supplier role. Uh, within my role, uh, I help to drive innovation in the data side of the business and the analytics side of the business, particularly in the types of data that we use and how you use data to innovate and, and feed your applications. Um, we cross many markets, lending being one of them. We service the other parts of Black Knight, but we also service um, the marketing industry, the insurance industry, and, and uh, modeling and scoring and real estate and title and, and everything else that goes along with that. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, Nancy, with no further ado, I will introduce you. Nancy, you may be on mute. Okay, Nancy may be having some technical difficulties in today's uh, call, so I will uh, give it just another second. Nancy, are you there? Okay. Well, why don't we jump to the next question? And Nancy, when you have the opportunity uh, to fix the mic, uh, feel free to just ping me in chat and we'll come back to you. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to come back to you, Raman, and I'm going to ask you to provide our attendees with an example from your experience where technology has impacted innovation. Uh, great question. I'll provide an example from where I work, uh, construction. Um, as I mentioned, there's a lot of change happening in construction. And this is a recent change. Last, let's say, five or six years, the construction industry started going through a digital transformation. And uh, they started changing their processes, started using a lot more technology. Um, the purpose wasn't to replace humans. It was just, just to enhance the, uh, the output that we can get. An example that comes to mind is there's this use of cameras on uh, job sites to track how the construction uh, progress is going on, to track security um, issues, to track safety issues. And so you can get this uh, camera feed 24 seven, or you can have individuals walk around the job site and get this uh, video and image um, in live stream that helps address a lot of these issues. Um, now you can track uh, safety issues. Somebody's not wearing a hard hat, a hard hat. Um, or with COVID now, they want to make sure there is uh, social distancing happening or people are wearing face masks and so on. So there's this whole um, slew of companies which are solving this problem now. And they're bringing all these new technologies to uh, innovate in this space. Um, and then further, uh, they are now bringing AI and machine learning to actually automate a lot, lot of these tasks. So you can get a live video stream. You need somebody to actually sit and watch the video stream and find those issues. And so the next uh, frontier is to actually apply machine learning to the video and point out all the issues that somebody needs to pay attention to. So this whole um, ecosystem of innovation has kind of spawned out of this uh, effort. And it's, it's incredible to see. That's really remarkable, Roman. Roman, do you feel that the technology facilitated the progress in any way in that, in that example? Uh, for sure. 
so it wasn't like a lot of these customers were asking for uh, these prompts to be started using this technology. Um, frankly, the construction is obviously one of the slower industries to adopt technology. It's a lot of these people came in and they saw the potential and they brought the, the innovation. Um, obviously, it took some convincing for the customers to see that, but once it has been, uh, that threshold has been crossed, now the customers themselves are demanding more. So in this case, technology came first, tried to solve problems, and now the customers have kind of realized the potential and they are asking for more. Thank you very much. I understand that uh, Nancy was able to join us. Nancy, I want to come back to you and give you the opportunity to introduce yourself and share a bit about your role. Sure. Um, hey, Kelly and everybody. Thanks for uh, bearing with me. Uh, my computer decided to do an update just then, so um, sorry, I'm late. So my name is Nancy Wang. I am the head of data protection services or a service if you guys run workloads on top of AWS called AWS Backup. Um, what I do is I lead a team of engineers, product managers, designers, and data scientists for the purpose of thinking about what is the next gen data protection platform and capabilities that enable some of the largest Fortune 500 customers to run their mission critical workloads on AWS. Um, outside of AWS, I'm super passionate about getting more women into tech leadership roles, whether that's in product management, engineering, data science, so on and so forth. So proud to lead an organization called Advancing Women in Product. And thank you, Kelly and the uh, HANA House team for having me today. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, we understand technology uh, can both drive innovation and there are moments when technology can sometimes hold us back. And that's an important and fun part of today's conversation. Uh, I think it's a great transition to uh, the question number two, Nancy, if you don't mind sharing, can you provide our attendees with an example from your experience, either through work or your role with advancing women in product uh, where technology has impacted innovation? Yeah, for sure. So I, I know right around the time I joined, Raman was giving examples of how technology has disrupted innovation in the construction field. And so coming at it from, let's say, you know, so when you think about a cloud provider, whether that's AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud, among other providers out there, that's typically the plumbing of the internet. And so what I typically work on is platforms that enable companies to write business applications to, for, for example, innovation purposes. And if you think about you know, the advent of the cloud and cloud computing, that was really a big step forward in enabling customers and large corporations who are our customers to really speed up the way that they innovate. Right, so you no longer have to provision out your physical servers, your physical hardware, and really take advantage of the elastic kind of pay as you go. Right, so that's kind of the broad, you know, cloud example. Specifically, just again using AWS services as an example, there's different platforms such as SageMaker, where if you want to build different AI applications for various verticals, you can take advantage of the fully managed capabilities. And there's just so much more, especially within the world of infrastructure, which oftentimes most people don't think of when they think of uh, innovation in business applications. Thanks. I think it's uh, really interesting now, especially to think about uh, the role of cloud in relationship to change agility. I saw recently that uh, Amazon announced uh, the cloud services division had a 33% uh, increase quarter over quarter. Um, do you think that change has been a motivator that's driven innovation uh, for organizations and then supported by the cloud team? Or do you suppose uh, the technology being available has allowed people to think differently about the ways that they can work. Well, it's definitely a little bit of both, right? And so just to clarify, especially within the Amazon or Amazon Web Services lexicon, the service word not, not isn't necessarily service as uh, I feel like 
other industries may define, such as consulting services or whatnot. So for example, I'm on a service team, uh, specifically within the storage, broader storage organization. And so what a service means is a short connotation for a software as a service um, that you, know, you can find throughout AWS or even other cloud providers as well. So part of what's really interesting to me for my role is really talking with some of the largest customers out there. And some of them might be in highly regulated industries like fintech or financial services, oil and gas, media entertainment, so on and so forth, and really helping them to think about ways that they can increase their speed of um, development, for example. So spending more time on thinking about building business applications as opposed to, as I mentioned previously, with on-premises data centers, you have to think about provision you have to think about simply buying more uh, NAS storage or primary storage when you're building new applications. So it's really changed the way that our customers think about you know, innovating and really their processes for building innovation. Thank you very much. I, I think today's conversation uh, is really interesting the way that uh, the components are going to come together. And as I transition uh, to ask Richard, I'll be interested to see if there are similarities between uh, the responses from our speakers. So Richard, uh, asking you the same question, can you provide our attendees with an example from your experience? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, my my uh, example will be a little different um, in the fact that uh, I play in the data world. Um, and, you know, we know all the terms around uh, certain technology around data, the big data term, machine learning, artificial intelligence, um, uh, OCR, and, and all sorts of things. Really, you know, technology in the data world um, is is really, you know, the driver of innovation. Um, you know, uh, as a founder of new markets, um, so uh, in my example, taking these large data sets that are property-centric and applying them not just to traditional markets that you would think property information would play in, but all sorts of different markets, you know, uh, obviously real estate and, and mortgage, but um, uh, property data plays now and, and supports businesses uh, through um, uh, insurance, through marketing. Uh, I've even worked with video game manufacturing companies that utilize the property information to make the virtual world look more realistic, right? So there's all sorts of technological uh, innovations that happen uh, when using data. Um, you know, so, so technology is really a vehicle for that innovation uh, uh, and an enhancer of, of human capability. So, uh, you know, in reality, I, I think the, the, one of the prime examples I'll, I'll, I'll use is, um, you know, we use technology on a daily basis in my world to help get data to people. Um, Nancy was talking about cloud services and things like that. So we have a, our data as a service. Um, and uh, 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 what you're seeing is as, as, as the, the use of data and the storage capabilities and the ease of moving data through cloud services and things like that become easier, the technological advances get, get more beneficial to the company. So um, for instance, um, you know, we look at, at data sets now and client needs, and we look at what we call push versus pull technology. Whereas in the past, a lot of data was push. You would ask for information and you would get something back in return. Now, uh, with the technology the way it is today, you can actually um, provide information and then as things change, it could be fed to you, right? So in our world, for instance, um, we can monitor a portfolio of accounts or relationships uh, of a company and then tell you when certain things happen um, uh, uh, based on the data. Uh, they've acquired a new property, they've moved to a new city, they've... Uh, taking a new job, whatever that information is. So, um, you know, we're seeing every day in our world uh, innovation, which is uh, uh, driven by technology, making change, uh, which is disruptive. And that's what technology really is, is disruptive for, for, for markets and businesses. Thank you very much. I think uh, all of you have provided really interesting conversations uh, that, uh, examples that would make me want to have a chat, right? To think about how a video game company leverages real world data 
to create a more real world experience offline for uh, their consumers to think about how the cloud service can automate the support so that they can focus that energy toward that is really valuable. Um, I'm going to do just a quick housekeeping note uh, for all of you who are on as attendees. Uh, we have given you the ability to unmute, uh, but we would ask that unless you're actively speaking, that you do keep your line muted for us, uh, just for uh, consistency for today's panel. Uh, that said, I'm going to come back to you, Nancy, and I'm going to ask the next question uh, for uh, our team, uh, which is, what role do you feel technology plays in driving business innovation? Yeah, so I'm going to riff on something that Richard just mentioned, right? Technology is the medium in driving business innovation, because if you think about how innovation has occurred, not just sort of within the myopic view of, you know, the 2010s, but going back to the early 20th century or even the 19th century, right? It really changes how you think about the pace, the process, the different steps in innovating. So to maybe give a concrete example, right? Um, again, using cloud and the way that people think about building business applications. It's a lot faster these days, right? Again, using the data model, because I also happen to work in data services, especially around data protection, is when you think about building a model to validate hypotheses or different algorithms, right? For example, when you're trying to innovate your business, the time to delivery from concept to launch has really shortened for a lot of people. Right. And, you know, without going into the whole history of waterfall deployment versus agile deployment and launches, uh, the ability to simply leverage all of these other data sets that are now publicly available in training your model and iterating your model has enabled many, many companies, especially within the data um, and AI space to quickly spin up their business models. And that is really what I think is a great case of technology empowering business innovation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Raman, I'd love to have you chime in now. Uh, sure. So first of all, um, I share the same sentiment in terms of, um, and maybe it's, this is a little bit cliche, uh, data is gold today. And it's, it's everywhere to see, like you look at any industry, every industry wants to collect the data and then leverage it for making better decisions. And so kind of completely agree with uh, Nancy and Richard on that. Uh, see that on the construction side today, uh, the companies are realizing they they have all this data they they've been capturing in our system, and they want to leverage that to make uh, better predictions on when they will complete the project and is it going to be completed in in time or in budget, and are there any security or uh, safety issues to, that they can predict? So there's a lot a lot of that happening. Um, going back to like how um, we can bring innovation using technology. So I look at it in two aspects. Um, at least in the organization that I am in, it grew organically where they brought a lot of innovation to the market where uh, maybe the market wasn't looking for a certain type of technology or solution, but they said this could be solved in a better way. And here's an here's innovative idea. And so they had that foresight and vision um, that they brought to the table. And then as we keep scaling up, um, we've reached a point where what, what I call um, strategic innovation needs to happen, where we look at what are the areas where, where we need to focus, uh, what are the markets we need to focus on, and what are the needs of those markets. And let's bring innovation to solve the needs of those markets. So that's sort of a change, uh, cultural shift, and I'm sure it's happening in other organizations as well. Um, usually, early stage of an organization is bringing like, a lot of innovative ideas, and as the organization scales up, then you try to look at where you want to evolve and grow as an organization and then try to uh, narrow down the areas that you want to focus on. Thank you very much, Roman. I think that uh, both of you raise really outstanding points around uh, the evolution of innovation, uh, looking at the exponential pace of change uh, in the way that data supports that. I'm interested to hear, uh, Richard, your perspective on the role you feel technology plays in driving business innovation. Sure, I, I think a great example is exactly what we're all doing today, right? Um, 
you know, technology has enabled um, all of us to go through this pandemic, um, uh, you know, in many cases without missing a beat. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, everybody on this call seems to be probably working from a home situation. I know I haven't missed a beat. Um, uh, you know, technology allows, um, you know, allows your business to drive 24-7, 365 days a year internationally. Um, you know, we, we don't have the same barriers that we had before. Um, you know, as I mentioned uh, when I first spoke, you know, technology is disruptive, right? And we're seeing something here. What markets are going to get disruptive and change? How are they going to have to innovate? Um, you know, being in the property uh, property business and, and whatnot and the lending businesses, you know, what's going to happen to commercial real estate um, as, as, you know, people don't start going back to the office after all this is over, right? Um, how does that change and how do commercial properties need to innovate? You know, I read an interesting article on self-driving vehicles and how is that going to change things? You know, um, so how will commercial real estate have to innovate if you don't have to build parking structures? Okay. Um, so technology is, is, is changing, you know, and driving business innovation by um, really being the vehicle for innovation and, and, and having to make change, right? It's disruptive. If, if you don't, if no one's driving to work anymore, then do we need commercial office buildings? If, if we need commercial office buildings, but we're not driving cars there. We have self-driving cars that drop us off and pick us up. We don't need a parking structure. What we need is a drop-off lane and a pickup lane, right? Um, so uh, I think, you know, to, to answer the question on what role does technology play in driving business innovation, it, it dri it's disruptive and it drives change, right? Um, you know, in, in my business in particular, the fact that um, data is more accessible for everybody, um, uh, data, you could move large chunks of data today where you couldn't in the past, um, you know, that has continued to, um, uh, allow companies to drive innovation and do things they probably couldn't have done before. Um, I remember I took a trip to Boston once and I was at Harvard university. And if you've ever been in the, um, computer science building at Harvard, there's this giant machine that sort of the whole length of the lobby. Uh, or, or the, the the atrium of the of the building, and uh, if you read the plaque on it, it talks about that giant machine has the computing power of a, a, a of a, a watch that you would wear, a calculator watch that you would wear today, right? Um, so uh, you know you could see how innovation and technology go together to drive business, and um, you know it's that disruption. Uh, that really is the key to uh, to the to the business innovation drivers. Thank you very much, and I love the example of uh, the you know mainframe computer versus uh, calculator watch uh, that you gave. I think it it provides a wonderful visual to the the reasons for the pace of change. Uh, I think uh, Raman brought up a really interesting aspect of this, which is the uh, the role that customer problem or anticipating a customer's problem in driving business innovation plays. Uh, and as we look forward to next month's business fights, we'll be talking about the role of empathy uh, in in innovation and in business itself. Um, and so before I open the, the floor up to the audience for questions, uh, I want to give each of you the opportunity uh, to speak uh, openly about uh, any takeaways from this initial component. So Nancy, any, any thoughts on uh, the topics that have been raised by the panel so far? Or Raman or Richard, uh, any of you, feel free. Uh, yeah, this is Richard. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, what, what I find interesting, I'd like to hear maybe in, in, in some of the attendees of the session, um, their thoughts, but um, as we continue to move forward with, um, um, uh, you know, te technological advances continue to drive business, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic right now. 
where does where does um, uh, the the group on this call today see um, uh, technology changing uh, and making an impact to as we come out of uh, out of COVID? So is that going to be in in um, uh, medical uh, testing? Uh, is that going to be in how we conduct business? You know, uh, we're on a Zoom. I think we're on a Zoom call, right, or a Zoom chat. Um, what would we be doing if we didn't have this kind of streaming capability and live capability um, uh, today to run our businesses, right? Um, so I'd be curious as we as we go forward in the question and answer session and some thoughts from the audience on where you think um, technological change, uh, the biggest drivers are going to be coming out of this pandemic. It's a great question. Back to the audience. Uh, I'll allow the audience to uh share your thoughts back in the group chat and we'll have brian uh try to consolidate them and respond back as a group but i want to make sure that we leave time for all of you to ask questions of our incredible panelists so uh, for all of you who are participating on the call i uh, will now open it up for you to ask general questions you can add those questions in the zoom group chat box or feel free to raise your hand uh, using the participant hand raise button, uh, and we'll call on you to ask out loud if you prefer. We do have one question here from Hans. Um, she asks, uh, the pace of parents of change can vary greatly. This pandemic induced change has definitely been quick, but um, in your guys' opinions, is it temporary or permanent? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll start and then, you know, uh, everybody else can chime in. But, um, you know, it, it's interesting. This pandemic has been really focused on sort of a temporal aspect to it, right? How long is this going to last? Um, you know, and, and, and the pendulum keeps seems to be swinging, right? Um, uh, so I have an interesting answer to: Is it temporary or is it permanent? Um, uh, I, I think it's. I think the change from this is going to be permanent. Although the pandemic itself, I don't believe will be, but I think um, the pace is picked up and will be this way. I think. Um, I think you will see a lot of change. I think we talked a little bit about some of it being your work structure and environment is going to change probably permanently going forward. I. Uh, uh, most people I talk to that are now working from home and have never done that before are going to do that at least part of the time going forward. So I think there's going to be a lot of change there. Um, uh, so I think the change is absolutely going to be permanent. Uh, and, you know, I think we're going to see a lot more of it as we go forward, as, as people become adaptable uh, to the things that are happening in the world and realize, you know, in reality, what, you know, what, what we can do and what, what um, uh, that I think we've uh, surprised ourselves with. Yeah, I would certainly agree with that. In terms of you know lasting change, just from a people management perspective, um, I think over or a quarter of my team has joined since the start of COVID. So just onboarding, um, training, right? Pair programming is not what it used to, I'll say that much. Um, but I think in terms of how just employees have found themselves to be able to be productive while working from home is really key, right? Because that helps to, I think, break down the barriers um, from for the managers as well in thinking of, hey, if you do work from home for a certain number of days per week or a certain percentage, right, that doesn't necessarily mean that your productivity is going to be impacted. If anything, it is an environment that you feel comfortable, that you feel productive in, and it may actually improve productivity for the team as a whole. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and I would add to that, you, the expansiveness now of the talent pool has grown tremendously, right? Um, jobs that we thought were something that had to be done um, at a location. Uh, now, you know, you could find talent of people that are not available to move. Um, you, uh, you know, you address visa issues. Uh, so the talent pool is uh, significantly greater uh, uh, when you're in a hiring situation. Yeah, there's definitely a huge change in terms of uh, the whole culture of where you work from, how you work, uh, that's changing. 
my te team was already half remote by the time the pandemic hit. So it wasn't a big change, but a lot of uh, people in the organization had not done this. And now everybody's realizing that, well, we can, we can make it work. And, uh, and that's just a uh, tech industry, but then look across um, a lot of other industries, construction, healthcare. Um, my wife uh, is a doctor and she's also a healthcare executive and they had not used uh, telehealth much before. And now uh, they're using it in a, in a really big way. Uh, part of the, the assumption or the pushback was, well, our patient population is not comfortable doing that. Um, she works for a nonprofit and they have like 100,000 patients focused on um, low income and people who don't have insurance. And uh, they ran this biggest survey um, of migrant farm workers in California. And they found like 70% of these, these people actually have smartphones and they use uh, different types of apps and they, they're all interested in doing telehealth. And so they've rolled out that program now and it's, um, it's receiving good response. For them, uh, they didn't want to come in into the doctor's office. They'd lose like two to three hours of wage. And um, telehealth is actually making it uh, feasible for them to get themselves checked out, and especially if, uh, they being essential for COVID. Um, so it's, it's a big change across all industries. But I see all the changes, um, at least the big trends are all positive. Thank you all very much for that response. Uh, during your uh, answer to the last question, Richard, you mentioned uh, the impact of the pandemic on the commercial real estate sector. And one, com one question that comes up is uh, how does uh, change uh, impact other change? And so I think using that as an example, um, to, to explore this com conversation, uh, once change is introduced, does it ever go away? And how does it impact other change? So for example, in that commercial sector, uh, much of our social system in many cities is dependent on commercial tax income to support social services. Uh, if we have a decline in utilization of commercial lease space, how does that impact public services and how do we move forward. So in this concept of change, uh, once change is introduced, does it ever go away? And how does change impact other change? And I'll open it up to any of you to respond back. Yeah, this is Richard. I'll, I'll start. Um, sitting next to me here is my Peloton bike. So I'm going to use that as a good example. Um, you know, if you think about the, that model, right? Uh, they developed a, 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 a workout experience or a gym experience uh, at your home, right? So their technolo technology of uh, building that and distributing that um, uh, created change in the fact that now they've created a, uh, a, a home gym concept that um, uh, competes with uh, going to a gym. What that's done is now that's dri driven different change, right? Now, now people are 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 um, are exercising more and differently. Um, and then you add the pandemic, and now all of a sudden you can't go to a gym, right? And it provides you an option. So I think my answer to your question is change uh, doesn't stop, but it just keeps sort of compounding on each other, right? I, I think we talked about technology being disruptive, right? Disruption meaning change. Um, innovation creates, you know, innovation is really divergence or it's difference, right? And so uh, I think as innovation and technology continue to grow, it just continues to be disruptive and different and, and, and sort of layers on top of each other. Um, I see it in my business all, all day long, right? Um, clients don't go backwards, they go forward, right? Um, we were talking about the cloud with, you know, Nancy was talking about cloud services. You know, when I first started in this business, there was no such thing. We had clients that were receiving data through uh, dial-up modems. Now, big portion of our customers have converted to cloud-based services. Um, you know, think about all the transition that's happened from a dial-up modem to a cloud-based service over the years. So no one's gone back to dial-up modems, right? But we just keep layering on change on top of each other. 
Thanks, Richard. Roman or Nancy, do you have any thoughts on the idea of change compounds? Uh, for sure. I mean, when you look back um, at historical events where there was some sort of adversity, uh, look at the, the 2008, 2009 financial crisis, and, and now the situation is repeating itself. Um, usually those situations are followed by some new wave of innovation. Look at Uber, um, look at Twilio, a lot of these uh, marketplaces, Airbnb, they all came out after the financial crisis happened. And they just changed the game in terms of how people do certain things. And, and I see that same sort of a situation emerging. It's probably going to be a different set of industries. I already see that in healthcare. There are a lot of uh, telehealth startups getting a lot of funding in this time. And so um, people's behavior is definitely changing, and it's changing for the better. Um, there's no going back. Um, yes, uh, somebody like Zoom could get a little bit of a stock hit as they got recently. Uh, because yes, uh, once people start going back to a new normal, uh, it won't be the same. But um, are people going to stop using Zoom at this point? No. Um, so I think it's all these changes uh, accumulate and they're here to stay and they're for the better. Thank you. Yeah, and then tying, I think what you know, Richard as well as Raman said together, given that there is this new paradigm where there's telehealth, right? There's video conferencing as very normal way to have meetings these days. Like for example, I can't remember the last time I put a meeting room on my calendar invite for work. So kind of bringing all these ideas together, there are also legislation and actually policies. I know this wasn't uh, covered um, in the, one of the panel questions, but I would be curious to maybe just hear from Richard as well as Raman, right? Given the prol proliferation of data that's being transferred, right? There's going to be new advances coming out in how data is encrypted, how you ensure the safety and the security of maybe customer data that you share. And also with regards to international regulations like GDPR or other, um, data residency controls how do you ensure that you are following right the, all the data governance policies around providence and so on and so forth that enables you to transfer all this data so that's something actually that i'm personally really curious about and you know to the topic of startups that's where i see actually a lot of startup activity um, so i also do angel investing on the side and recently have heard from these startup founders that you know this is an area that is really interesting to them because of this explosion of data being transferred that's a great thought nancy thank you and i think uh we could probably spend another two hours together talking about this uh, really important topic. Uh, I am going to ask Raman and Richard to share any thoughts you have actually in the chat so we have it uh, for the future, but I want to give uh, each of you the opportunity for final thoughts just as we close out, just to make sure that we stay uh, protecting people's time as well. So uh, Richard, any final thoughts as we uh, prepare to close our call? Um no, I just uh, you know thank everybody for your time and and joining on. Um, uh, you know if if anybody wants to reach out, you know you can. I'm on LinkedIn and uh, be glad to uh, 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 chat if uh, if you need anything. And um, you know appreciate uh, the uh, support from um, all of you in getting this set up for us. So thank you. Thank you, Raman. Any final thoughts? Sure. So I just want to close out on this thought of uh, what does this change mean for us, uh, especially as it relates to innovation? Uh, what does that mean for my uh, role, my career, uh, my career growth? Um, that's something to reflect about. And I'm, I'm reflecting on that now. Like, what's the path I want to take from this point on? Uh, so that's the same question I have for the audience. And uh, not that you have to respond here. But um, if you want to discuss that anytime, I'm happy to connect and have a conversation on that. I was say, Raman, you stole the idea right out of my head. Um, so actually, I, I usually like to end panels or, or talks on a very actionable note. And so my recommendation for everybody on this call is, you know, thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to us, to share your ideas. And that's actually one of my biggest points of advice of advice for folks who are looking to continue advancing their careers during the time of COVID, during the times of remote work. 
because these days, right, because we're all sequestered in our houses working from home, there is no longer the hallway conversation or water cooler conversation or sort of stop by my office conversations that can happen for you to, let's say, have one-on-one -on -one time or executive exposure to your leadership to show them what you've been working on. And so I think because of that, this actually behooves us to be even more proactive with the way that we set up our one-on-ones, that we keep up our networking, because I can't stress how important networking is to continue your growth uh, your, your career, career growth process, because it enables individuals not just inside your company, but also outside of your company to be updated or to keep abreast with all of the projects that you're leading and all of the new skills that you're gaining. So definitely that's one thing um, I'd love to leave the audience with. Well, I want to thank all of you for your time. Uh, really remarkable and very valuable insights. Um, from actionable insights to things that will certainly keep me up at night, Richard, thinking about uh, the impact of compounding change on how we work together. We did have some audience answers and they really come down to three key areas that innovation is impacting health and vaccines, education and political and social structure. Um, so I think as we continue to look forward, um, we'll be continuing this dialogue. I'm going to hand it over to Brian for a few closing details, but I really can't thank all of you enough for taking time out of your very busy days to join us and share your thoughts and valuable advice. Brian? Yes, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll be providing a link to the survey. Please let us know your thoughts and feedback. It will really help us greatly for our next business fights. Um, this session was recorded, so once we get that up and running, we'll be sending up a follow-up email again with the survey and potentially the next business side event on September 9th. So look forward to seeing everyone else there. Thank you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you, Hana House team for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you.